My name is John Ghostly, and uh, I have experience teaching several different platforms, and I have a lot of experience in IT as well. So I do teach ITIL. Uh, I teach uh, architecture too, which is a TOGAF framework, IT architecture, and I teach IT governance, which is a COVID-5. Uh, I have experience in uh, running an IT organization uh, at a place called Aveda, and we have shampoo, conditioners, cosmetics, that kind of thing. Uh, I was there about 12 years, and then I got into teaching full-time and consulting. So I, I've done uh, real projects with ITIL, as well as uh, have spent many years teaching ITIL. And I've, and I've taught here at Simply Learn. We'll come from the current ITIL Foundation. So that's me, John Ghostly. Uh, yeah, I have, I'm certified at the highest level in ITIL, ITIL expert. Uh, that's the level you need to be at in order to teach ITIL. And I'm a consultant in ITIL and uh, IT governance as well, which is something that uh, helps run ITIL, but it's a different framework. So we'll go through a little bit about what ITIL is. It's, it's a framework of processes for IT, to run IT. And what is a process? Well, a process is uh, it's, it's work. It's di different types of work. So if you get an input into a process, the inputs are transformed and work into outputs which are the output of our work. So they have identified different kinds of work within ITIL. And the current version, version 3, has uh, about 24 processes they've identified. And they've organized them into a life cycle, a cycle of work. Kind of like every business has a cycle. It has a cycle of uh, budgeting. And so does IT within a business. So they're going to, all these processes are going to work within this cycle as IT does its work to deliver value to its customers. And the cycle is called the service management life cycle. And then we have uh, five different stages in the service management life cycle. And those are units two, three, four, five, and six are the five stages. Why ITIL? Well, because, well, one thing is 80% of the companies in the U.S., at least that I know of, use ITIL and the language in it. Uh, and that's quickly spreading throughout the world. Uh, it started up in the U.K. and the Netherlands, but I know that it's spreading throughout the world. And I don't know what the number of percentage is around the world, but it's very high. So in a sense, if you want, want to learn about IT, you need to learn about ITIL to understand the language of uh, how IT does a large portion of its work, how it delivers value to its customers. And uh, there are a lot of jobs that are tied to ITIL certification. So it's a good investment in your time to, to learn ITIL. So here we'll, we'll take a little sample and we'll go into this design stage, which is the second stage. And so you'll be able to see some of what's in the design stage of ITIL. So we've got uh, what's the purpose, scope, and value of this stage, and what kind of roles and responsibilities are in service design. Well, the design stage is where you come up with the detail requirements for any any, uh, they call them service, any service that uh, IT is going to deliver. And what IDLE does is it organizes all of what IT does into something called a service. And it's kind of like when you go to a restaurant, you get a menu, right? And on this menu, you get all these things that you're going to get, uh, you know, services from the restaurant. So when you order from the menu, what you really order is like a bundle of services. Uh, like if you order like a number six at McDonald's hamburgers, they you can get a, a chicken sandwich. 
and then but you also get French fries and you get a Coke. So it's a little bundle of services. So that's the same thing as what Idle does in uh, IT is it uh, it organizes this service catalog, which is a big menu of what people uh, get uh, from IT, all the services that they that IT provides to them. So as we go through this service life cycle, it's a life cycle of building new services and enhancing services and uh, retiring services through the life cycle. The, the first, actually the first, uh, the first stage in the life cycle is service strategy. And that really answers the question of why we're going to do these projects uh, for these services. What's, what it really is of value to the customers and decides which projects we're going to do. Design, which we have here, is when you actually start doing the projects. You're going to, uh, strategy releases a project into design. It charters a project to be done for a certain service or a set of services. And this is where we do the detail requirements and the design itself. The, the detail requirements tell us what we need to do. And then uh, the design tells us how we are going to do it. And every design has a has a set of components, and re that have relationships to each other. So we we essentially what we've done by the end of design is we've picked our solution to the uh, to the requirements and the business need. So our objective is to design uh, a service that meets a customer meets uh, what's of value in their requirements and helps identify what the business needs in detail and then uh, identify a solution. So service design helps uh, designing these services effectively and also you know taking the latest in technology trends etc and applying those and we want to continually improve it as we go. So what's the scope? Uh, the scope of design is a big changes that are coming, like new services, existing, major existing enhancements, enhancements on existing systems, and retirements, really, of services, which are major projects, too. Sometimes they're long programs, even. Uh, it's also, what tools and systems are we going to need to deliver this from an IT standpoint? Not just the, the solution itself, like SAP or Oracle, or whatever, but all the tools we're going to need to deliver it effectively, like how we're going to monitor it, whether it's up and down, how we're going to handle tickets, uh, if there are incidents that take place and, or problems, and uh, all kinds of the, the, all the systems that underpin the service as well. And then the technology and architecture. So we want to have an architecture, technology architecture as a part of our design. And then we want to have metrics too. Metrics are in scope. We want to know how to measure how well this service is going to work and uh, or how well it's working once it's in production. So we need to design all that. And then there are processes themselves. We're going to have to design the processes uh, within design. What's the value for the business of service design? Uh, lower co total cost of ownership <clears throat> over the entire life of the service. Uh, you'll see because we've used an architecture approach, we look at the whole life of the service and integrate it well with other services that are needed uh, in the business, and that gives us an overall lower cost of ownership using uh, compatible technology and applications and uh, data, integrated data. It's going to give us a lower total cost of ownership. So these are all about delivering value to our customers and to the business, uh, the customers being within our business, that uh, you can actually say that every process has a customer. So even processes that are within our within IT that just uh, deliver to internal people inside our custom our company are we can refer to them as internal customers. So because we're service oriented, even to our internal customers which actually for IT, almost all of our customers are internal customers, right? 
uh, their departments within our own company. So we want to deliver value to them, and value is what they need. And value is from their point of view, and from their uh, from their point of view and their perceptions, their preferences. So what IT can deliver is uh, a value proposition, but the customers ultimately decide whether it's a value. So that's what we're shooting for. We want to understand what's in our customers' heads in terms of what they want and need, and what's the priority of it. So we're going to have different roles also within ITIL. We're going to have uh, these processes or parts of or different types of work. We're going to give ownership uh, in terms of management of processes and owning processes. An owner will be a single accountable person for a certain type of work, like uh, in the service desk, we're going to have incidents where the system is disrupted. There's an unplanned disrupted, and we're going to, we need to uh, restore it as quickly as possible. So we're going to have somebody own that whole process because that process goes across IT departments, and, and so we need to have somebody accountable across departments for this process. As are all the other processes as well across departments. So that's why we introduced this. We're really big on roles and introducing these new process roles uh, so we can build in quality into the process and measure the processes and make sure they're improving. So we have an owner who's the one accountable person in the entire organization for that process. We'll have a manager who's responsible for the day-to-day -day operations of a process, like a service desk or a help desk process, actually two processes on the help desk, incident management and uh, service request management are the two. And uh, so we'll have a process manager for each one of those processes. The manager will, will, be, will manage the operational part of the process. Uh, the daily operations, 24 by 7 in whatever location, etc. So you, so you need uh, probably multiple managers. You only need one owner who's responsible for the overall quality and setting objectives and things for the process to improve it. But you have many managers for different locations and shifts. And then the practitioners are the ones that actually do the individual work. They do the activities. They transform all the inputs that are coming into the process into the output. They do the work. So those are some of the roles. And it's important to have roles because that way we're giving ownership to those people doing the work. Closest to the work, we give them ownership and the ability to improve how the work is getting done because it's a continual improvement thing. That's part of what the process manager and owner are going to do. They're going to listen to the people who are doing the work and improve with them as a team uh, from people close to doing the work. Practitioner ensures all the activities are carried out. They're working with the stakeholders. Those are basically uh, the internal customers and other uh, partners doing uh, providing uh, uh, assistance to do work on the process and uh, they're keeping records so we're going to keep records of all of our incidents that take place is one thing that's an unplanned uh, interruption to a service or we're going to keep track of something called problems too which are when we do a root cause analysis to determine the cause of an incident to uh, eliminate that cause and there are many other uh, Things we're going to keep track of changes would be another thing. Uh, we're going to keep track of incident of uh, events, which are changes as we watch the services, and then uh, what actions we need to take from those. So those are the roles. So within design, there are actually uh, four big things to consider when you're going to design a service because we want to go about a holistic design of a service. Not just the technology part, but also the people parts and our partner uh, relationships. These are all important. So we have these four P's of service design. This would be an example of a major concept within ITIL, a best practice concept. So the partner is are the partners that are outside of your organization that you rely on uh, to assist you in the service. 
and then and that's become obviously a very big part of IT, uh, relying on outside resources and the people. People, we have to find the right number of people, have to give the people the right skills and knowledge. Uh, we have to give them knowledge of the process and we have to give them uh, the right kind of management and organization and foster relationships. Those are all part of the design. Uh, product and technology is product or slash technology. That's the, actually the hardware software part. And the process itself is the fourth P. The processes are the activities that get done. And uh, we need that too. We need to design all the activities that get done within the, uh, the solution itself, the business solution. And then there's also a bunch of aspects of design that we have to consider. One is the solution itself that we come up with in design. And a solution, by, by the time you have the solution, you've actually picked how you're going to accomplish your design. You, uh, am I going to use a package? Or am I going to write the code myself or implement, uh, you know, some, uh, some kind of a system, like an email system or whatever is part of the solutions. But you have the, actually have the vendor names and uh, the custom components you're going to build if you, when you have the solution. So that's what you have by the end of design. You haven't actually built it yet. So you're going to use models, uh, that kind of thing, in order to draw pictures of what you're going to do, boxes and relationships that kind of stuff in a design. So uh, technology architectures, you got to figure that out when you got a big change coming and you got to you got to design the processes and you got to identify the metrics. So those are the five aspects of design that that you have to look at. So that's another concept. And then here's another concept they have in design. It's called a service design package. And this is the major output that comes from design to transition, which is the next stage. Transition stage is where you're going to build, test, and deploy the solution that you designed in service design. So the service design package are outputs wrapped up in a big package that uh, are needed to do the build, test, and design and deploy, build, test, and deploy. Basically, what's in here, you're going to have the requirements in there that you uh, came up with, the detail requirements, the design itself. You also have an organizational readiness assessment. Uh, how ready is the organization to implement this service or this enhancement to the service? And uh, what do we need to do in order to get ready? Because that, that's what happens in the next stage is you have to do all the... Uh, the activities that come out of the organizational readiness assessment. You're going to have to make sure those all happen in a holistic way so that we're ready to roll out the service. And we're also going to have a operational acceptance plan. You know, when can operations actually let the project team go away and be able to uh, support the new service? What needs to happen for that? And there'll also be uh, test specifications, you know, the acceptance test is also in the service design package. Only major designs go through the design stage. Uh, one that for a new IT service or a major change to an existing or a retirement of an IT service. Sometimes if they're smaller changes, they're just going to go into transition. They won't go through this big design stage and they'll go, they'll still be designed, but they'll be designed uh, just as a, uh, a smaller change. So they, that all happens in transition. So in a sense, there are two paths. The bigger projects come through design. The others just uh, start in change management and, and go through that way. So that's sort of a summary of design. OK. Thank you, everybody. And uh, have a good day.